seventh day of session, a lot going on. We'd love to talk about um, a uh, diversified group of issues going on um, this week, but uh, we're going to focus this week on education. And uh, we're going to start with uh, Senator Hoffman, who's going to talk about sort of the budget issues. And then we're going to move on to Senator McKinnon, who's going to talk about a suite of uh, education bills that she has um, that you'll be seeing this week. And then I'm going to go over to Shelley, Senator Hughes. She's going to talk about her Senate Bill 96 and education committee plans. So uh, let's start with you, Senator Hoffman. Thank you, Senator Machicki. Uh, as the chairman of the operating budget, the, the, the challenge that we have as a state to continue to provide the services that the people of Alaska expect, the demands that we try to reduce our deficit. And uh, the deficit, uh, as everyone is well aware, is about $2.8 billion. And the at the beginning of the year, the the Senate Finance Committee said that we were going to be uh, looking at the five, the four major uh, budget drivers, um, that being education, health and social services, uh, Department of Transportation, and the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. As uh, we went through, we adopted the reductions that we set forth in the three um, three areas. We had stated we w were going to uh, accomplish the 5% reduction to education. And that is accomplished by looking at the only major, uh, major source of funds in the, um, in the budget, and that is the, uh, the, the BSA. So we looked at the chart of where we had received cuts um, to the departments from 15 through 18, and the second to the last was the education funding at 7.9, the highest being commerce at 54.3, the second uh, Department of Labor at 37.3, so substantial reductions in, in those areas. Uh, the, there has, with that, uh, we're looking at trying to get a 5% reduction in in the education component, uh, the largest one, again, being the base student allocation. And we're looking at reducing that uh, uh, formula by $69,383,000 to achieve that. Again, uh, we as a state uh, are continuing to struggle with the fact that uh, we are living beyond our means today. Um, the Senate has passed Senate Bill 26. Even with the passage of 26, there still is a deficit of close to half a billion dollars. And, uh, and I think that uh, we are going to be rolling out the, um, the final version of, uh, of the operating budget that includes this reduction to education um, sometime today. Thank you, Senator Hoffman. Senator McKinnon. Thank you, Majority Leader Machiki. In Alaska, we have high achieving students. We have great districts, great teachers, but inside of that greatness, we have many schools that are just not achieving what we had hoped them to achieve. And I'll leave it to Senator Hughes to talk about some of the deficit in how our students are performing against their colleagues, both nationally and internationally. The goal of the suite of bills that we're proposing is prioritizing education as our constitutional responsibility, K through 12 specifically. We need to improve outcomes for Alaska students. The State Board of Education should be adopting best practices that support students and teachers in Alaska. We need to provide for efficiency and streamlined delivery of education processes and education procedures. Alaska students deserve a 21st education, 21st century education. So this afternoon, this morning, you'll be seeing three bills that will accompany other bills that are already out there. The first bill 
transforms the Alaska Performance Scholarship into the Alaska Education Innovation Grant Fund, providing future funds for districts who work with DEED to transform how they deliver education to our students. Seniors who qualify currently for the Alaska Performance Scholarship will see four years of funding and all those in the system will be able to go through and continue with the Alaska Performance Scholarship. The second bill is E-Rate that will expand faster broadband to those that are already connected. It will uh, take our broadband limit from 10 megabytes to a goal of 25 megabytes per second, helping to increase delivery of virtual education where districts choose to do that and deploy that tool. The third piece of leg legislation is on curriculum. Right now, school districts review their curriculum, and we are proposing to suspend that review for three years to save school districts both time and money in working with DEED to accomplish what we hope is best practices adopted by the Board of Education. As you know, the new commissioner has proposed an Alaska challenge to those districts to join with him in providing a better outcome for our students. So in a nutshell, uh, what we propose is uh, three measures that should provide funding, cost savings to current districts as we work through making sure that our students can compete both nationally and internationally. Thank you, Senator McKinnon. Senator Hughes. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader, and thank you all of you for being here this morning. Our core responsibility constitutionally is to the children. It is to the public school system. and. Uh, as I have come into this role and brought a new perspective, and having had four children in public schools a few years ago, I realized that some of the things I saw back then were still happening. In fact, in some ways, it had gotten worse. And, and yes, we have amazing teachers, and we, we actually have some schools with 100% graduation rates, but we have a very large achievement gap. There's a disparity. And so as I've worked with uh, folks in the House Education Committee across the aisle, we realized that virtual education is one of the solutions to not reform education but transform education. We're at the point where from between 2003 and 2015, we've stayed stagnant as far as uh, reading scores as, as an example at only 27% proficiency. So as we've, as we've increased funding, we're not seeing any change to the academic achievement of our students. That's not acceptable. That is not acceptable. We have an obligation to our students in the state. We have an obligation to offer every single student access to great teachers, which will, virtual education will help beam great teachers across the state where it's difficult to recruit and retain. We have teacher retention rates as, uh, or turnover rates, I should say, as high as 70%. 70%, in fact, I heard there was one school where it was 100%. That is not, that is not healthy for our students. What student is going to be motivated to come into the classroom when every year they don't know who the teachers are going to be or the teachers that they like leave? So virtual education will allow our, great, our best certified teachers to help those students where we have this disparity, where we have this achievement gap. So, um, you know, since we began in January, we've been casting the vision that we're going to transform education one step at a time, and we've started that journey. And the suite that Senator McKinnon brought forward is uh, part of that. And we've been having these conversations. SB 96 is the other piece of that and it will establish the virtual education and also provide tools to school districts to deal with the new reality, the new fiscal reality. And so um, that is, uh, Mr. Majority Leader, uh, where I believe we need to go as a state for our kids because the bottom line is every single student matters. Every student matters in this state and we can do a better job and we're getting ready to do a better job um, using the great teachers across the state, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you. 
Senator Hughes. I, I want to remind folks that uh, many of these departments we brought down to the 2007 level of funding, right? And that's when our BSA was $5,380 per student. We've continued to increase the BSA for the last 10 years. Today we're at $5,930. This one-time reduction will take, for one year, um, it'll move us back to the 2014 level. That's at the same time that for every 100 high school freshmen, 29 won't graduate from high school, 40 won't attend college, 16 will go out of state for college, 10 will attend U, um, University of Alaska, but won't graduate within six years, five will graduate, five will graduate from the University of Alaska within five years, within six years, I'm sorry. And of all incoming Alaska freshmen to the university process, 52% of them require remedial coursework. And I'll define that as um, pre-100 level courses. So clearly we feel that a reset is required and that is not a hit on, on individual teachers or individual districts. Some of the districts are very highly performing. Um, we wanna do what we can so that Alaska has the best um, educational system in the country and we have made it a priority mm -hmm. by funding. When you talk about um, your values are reflected in your budget, the fact is we have not cut the BSA yet to date. And um, that is becoming challenging as we have this nearly $3 billion fiscal deficit. So Senator McKinnon. Well, thank you, Senator Machicki. And when we look at a cut to education, the fairest way to distribute the cut across to all districts is to use the BSA, which is why that formula is being used to short fund it and try to treat all districts in an equitable manner like, we, like when we do when we increase or provide funding. So the BSA is a tool to fairly distribute uh, either increases or decreases, which is why it's been chosen. Okay, let's... Um Sure. And, and I just want to say, I, I, I know that the reduction, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. I get that. On the one hand, this equitable, this equitable reduction, as Senator McKinnon stated, uh, that 5%, that nickel on the dollar that you've been hearing Senator Hoffman talk about. On the other hand, please take note, the $100 million in the Alaska Education Innovation Grant and um, that will become available as districts become creative, out of the box, innovative, to allow them to do more with less. So we are going to assist in that. So that, that's a pairing that we feel is really important because as a Senate majority, we do prioritize um, our K-12 students. Thank you, Senator. Any questions? Becky. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. I guess uh, maybe for Senator McKinnon, on the BSA cut, you talked about it being f the fairest. There are a lot of smaller districts, even some of the bigger districts, will, where they say that this will hurt a lot. Why not wait, I guess, to take a step like that before we get an innovation program that's that you can more easily, I guess, marry together so that the hit isn't as acute? And when you talked about um, the scholarship program transforming to an innovation program, you mentioned people in the system would be able to continue. Does that mean that if I'm a freshman in high school and I've taken classes that I can continue? Or can you sort of define, I guess, who would be affected by that? Certainly. Two questions. The, also, I'll go in reverse order. Uh, if you are 